G'day, I'm Alice Stempster. You might not know, but Squiz Kids is part of a bigger news offer. So while Squiz Kids is great for the little people in your life, if you want an adult fix of news every day, just search for Squiz Today in your podcast app. 6am every weekday, in 10 minutes, we'll get you across the news. Squiz Kids acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands on which we podcast, the Turrible and Combermary people. Squiz Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Monday, April 29. In Squiz Kids Today, TikTok on the chopping block, Tay Tay album breaks records, elephants on the move at Taronga, and the world's funniest crab joke. That's what's making news, kids style. The Lowdown. And it's a big welcome back to kids in New South Wales, ACT, South Australia and Tassie as you join the rest of the country back at school. Woohoo! So much has happened since you were gone. But one big story getting lots of attention last week and over the weekend was the announcement by the US government that it plans to ban TikTok. So why would a government as big as the United States be worried about a little social media platform full of videos of people dancing and doing glow-ups and makeup tutorials and funny cat and dog videos? Because US politicians are worried that the Chinese company that owns TikTok could be forced to hand over user data to the Chinese government. Something both the Chinese company ByteDance and the Chinese government have denied. You see, when you sign up to these social media apps, you agree that the company that runs them can keep track of everything you do and see online. We all leave digital footprints online whenever we go on the internet, whether it's to watch YouTube or play Roblox or flick through TikTok. And those footprints can reveal a lot of private stuff about us, stuff that sometimes we wouldn't want to share with the rest of the world. And the US government is worried that if that information fell into the wrong hands, it wouldn't be good for its people or its country. TikTok is fighting the proposed ban, which could take years to happen if it happens at all. But it's already got lawmakers here in Australia wondering if they need to do the same thing. Watch this space. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in the United Kingdom, where a crab joke competition has uncovered some of the best dad jokes I've ever heard. The seaside town of Margate is home to a crab museum, and this week they staged the first ever world's funniest crab joke competition to mark International Crab Day, which is apparently a thing. The local primary school kids sifted through 700 entries to help judge the winning jokes, a link to which I've stuck in today's episode notes. So, which crab-themed funny was the winner on the day? It was this one. Why did the crab cross the road? It didn't. It used the sidewalk. (laughs) Sidewalk. Crab. Get it? My favourite, however, is the joke that didn't win a place, and that was... Why did the crab get bad grades? Because it was below sea level. (laughs) How good is that? I love a joke with a zinger of a pinch line. Oops, there goes the dad joke alarm. Couldn't help myself. Animal Kingdom. It's the end of an era at Sydney's famous Taronga Zoo as a pair of elephants who have been living there for almost 20 years prepare to leave for a safari park in South Australia. (coughs) Star attractions, 31-year-old Pak Boon, who weighs a whopping 3,860 kilograms, and her 25-year-old elephant friend Tang Mo will leave Taronga Zoo next year to join a larger elephant herd at a much bigger park with multiple swimming holes in South Australia. And where they're going will be quite the party. 
Also making the move to the safari park will be another female elephant from Auckland Zoo and a male and female from Perth Zoo, making for an instant elephant herd. How lovely. It will be the end of an era, however, for elephant keeping at Taronga Zoo, which has had an elephant on site since way back in 1916. A rhino and some water buffalo will move into the elephant enclosure at Taronga. Hmm, when an elephant moves house, I wonder if it packs its own trunk. Oh, come on, it was asking for it. Pop Culture Corner. So here's the least surprising piece of news to happen over the weekend. Taylor Swift's new album release, The Tortured Poets Department, has broken all kinds of streaming records and shot straight to the top of the UK, US and Australian music charts. What's a music chart? It's a record of how many people have bought or streamed an artist's music. And in the case of Tay-Tay, it's a whole hell of a lot. In her homeland of the United States, the album racked up 799 million streams in its first week of release. Just stop and think about that for a second. Easily beating the previous record holder, Drake. In the United Kingdom, another massive music market for English-speaking artists, the Tortured Poets Department became the biggest selling album in seven years. Pipped only at the post by homegrown singer Ed Sheeran. And here in Australia, both the album and its first single, Fortnite, with Post Malone, shot straight to the top of the charts, coming in at number one a week after it was released. Meaning Taylor Swift has now had more number one albums in Australia than even Madonna. What do you mean you've never heard of Madonna? Ask your parents. Or maybe your teacher. Oh, okay, maybe ask your grandparents. Gosh, I feel old right now. It's Q&A time. And now a little bit of new school term housekeeping, now that you're all back in the classroom. Remember when I asked you to send in questions for a Squiz Kids Q&A with Treasurer Jim Chalmers? Well, loads of you did, and thank you so much. Now we're excited to say that the podcast will be dropping next Tuesday as the Treasurer prepares to deliver the federal budget. He's taken time out of his busy schedule to answer questions that you guys have sent in. Questions like, what is his favourite music? Why are his toenails painted? And is it nerve-wracking to make decisions about how to spend the country's money? All will be revealed. Keep your ears peeled for the special Q&A dropping in this channel next Tuesday. Peaches and cream, peanut butter and honey, sausages and Marty sauce. Some foods are just made for one another. And now, thanks to today's podcast sponsor, Sunbeam, you can add dried fruit and cheese to that list. Take the calcium-packed goodness of cheese and add the sweetness of sultanas and you have yourself a winning combination. Perfect for any lunchbox or a snack on the go. Keep an eye out for Sunbeam dried fruit and cheese snacks in the dairy fridge at your favourite supermarket. Just look for the Aussie animals on the red packaging. Time for the Quiz! This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. Which social media platform is facing a ban in the United States? Yep, that's right. It's TikTok. Question number two. Which Australian state are two elephants from Taronga Zoo moving to? Well done if you said South Australia. Question number three. The world's funniest crab joke competition has been held in which country? Yep, it's the United Kingdom. Shout outs. It's April 29. Today is International Dance Day, a day to celebrate how amazing dancing is for our physical and mental health, as well as being a whole lot of fun. And a shout out to all the dancers out there. It's also a special day for the following Squiz Kids celebrating a birthday today. And, of course, tomorrow. Joshua from Castle Hill, Isabella from Yass, Chloe from Nightcliff, Elliot from Seaford, Luca from Yandina, Lucas from Lura, Marcus from Artarman, Ollie from Lockleys, Zara from Brisbane, and Aubrey and James from Forest Lake. 
and belated birthday shout outs today go to Danielle from Alice Springs, Bianca from Springvale and Alex from Pennant Hills. And classroom shout outs today go to Class S3I at King Street Public School in Singleton. Ms. George's class at Marion Catholic Primary School in Horsley Park. Class M3 with Mrs. Adams at Noriupta Primary School. Class 6B with Mrs. Crozier at Marta Day Catholic Primary School in Wagga Wagga. Class 34P with Miss Page at Hornsby North Public School. Class 3 Red with Miss Coombs at the Queenwood School in Mossman. Stage 3 with Mr. Tranter at Mortlake Public School in Concord. And the Year 5 class with Mr. Edwards at St. Mary's Catholic Primary School in Crookwell. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au or fill out the form on our website. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow with a special Squiz the World as we visit India. As that country goes to the polls and elections are held there. We'll take a virtual excursion to one of the world's oldest civilizations, the world's biggest democracy. You don't want to miss it. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out.